as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Shalom, come to you once more from House of Prayer New Life Church, uh, Kayole uh, Junction, Comarok uh, Ranch. And I invite us into this session. If you are not with us in the first message, I invite you, you can get our message from the YouTube channel and you can subscribe for more messages from different uh, preachers, inspirers who will inspire you, who will give you something to build you. So I said, my name is Sister Trofosa, and I've been sharing on fellowship. Uh, already two messages are gone before. Fellowship, you can be able to subscribe, or you can be able to key in the YouTube channel and be able to get them, because they are a continuation of this message on fellowship. Let's pray, my Father. I will thank you, worship, and we bless you for another time to be before you, to listen to your word. Lord, bless the hearers and bless me. Give me, oh God, utterances to be able to be acceptable before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We shall read from 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 to 10, and this is on fellowship. This is then the message which we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship, with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Here, fellowship gives us another version of understanding. It's telling us the first John chapter 5, verse 10 is giving us the share part of it. Share with. And so fellowshipping is sharing with the Father. It's not complete if you are not sharing with the Father. It's sharing with the Son and sharing with the Holy Spirit. And it is not complete when you don't share with another person. Now, many can accomplish in their own way fellowship, as in can tune in to listening to radio to the word of God, tune in to other channels to listen to the word of God, or even through the television to listen to the word of God. But that in it does not bring in what fellowship requires if we don't do this thing. That brings us together in light. And also it says that you cannot fellowship if you live in darkness. Now, it explains what this darkness could be about. This darkness could be that you are fellowshipping with one another, but we are not connected to Christ, which means our fellowship is not with the darkness or with the brethren that are not in Jesus Christ, we can't call that fellowship or with a brother that is not walking right. That is not fellowship because it gives us further instructions that if we say, uh, if we walk in light as he is light, we have fellowship with one another. And that fellowship with one another causes the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us when we fellowship with one another. And there are instances where we go to church or our places of, 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 of worship. But then you go and you go back the same way without fellowshipping with anybody. No, it is not complete. You go, you listen without having fellowship or a relationship with the Father. No, it is not complete. We are being told 
that that life is the light of men. And in that life is the light that shines. And in it, there is dark, no darkness. And so, if we have that light inside us, that is the light of men, according to what John is telling us, then we will not walk in darkness. Because when we walk in darkness, and yet we say we are fellowshipping, then we are not fulfilling the goals of fellowship yet. Fellowship requires that we walk in light. We put our lives in light. We put our entire life, spirit, soul, and body in light with the word of God, in light with the love of God, in light with the worship of God, in light with the blood of Jesus Christ, in light with one another. Union with Jesus cannot be broken and we claim we have a fellowship. But fellowship with the Father can be broken because God is holy and can't allow sin to control our lives or choose to live in carnality and not in truth. It is easier for us to hold on Jesus because Jesus is our Savior. But we can't hold on the Father because God is holy. And when we fellowship in sin, we make him a liar and we make the blood of Jesus worthless. This will cause fellowship with the Father to be severed by not walking in truth. Now verse 7 tells us when we feel our fellowship is broken through sin or self, it needs to be restored and so, as soon as possible so that our fellowship can flow. Because in cases or instances where we are having no relationship with the Father because of sin, already the fellowship is broken. We have no relationship with one another because of some issues, already the fellowship is broken. We can't go to the Father when we still have not aligned our relationship or fellowship with one another. And so we need to repent our sins because that's what it is telling us, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us in this area of fellowship. And therefore, before we come together, or when we come together, we need to search ourselves so much. We need to confess our sins to one another. We need to repent to one another. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to search us, something that may hinder the fellowship, the flowing of the Holy Ghost in the, in the worship, in the fellowship, or with one another. Because when we come to fellowship, we need Christ to speak to us. We need God the Father to be there. We need the Holy Spirit to be there. But they're not coming when we are living in darkness, brethren. And therefore, every time we come to fellowship, it is a good conduit for righteousness so that we search ourselves and see if there be anything that can hinder without hypocrisy inside us, without keeping Dangerous cards under the table against one another. Because that alone will hinder the Holy Spirit not coming down. That alone will hinder the blood of Jesus not to cleanse us. Because it tells us that when we confess our sins to one another, that's when the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and causes us to be right with God. And therefore, let's get right the concept of fellowship. Let's come not to fellowship in darkness. Let's not hide darkness because our fellowship is to no avail. It will not avail anything at all because we have not fellowship according to the letter of John that gives us the direction of how to fellowship. And we realize that our God is so faithful that will forgive all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and restore our relationship with him. It's just a matter of heart. It's just a matter of conviction. It's just a matter of wanting to fellowship. It's just a matter of allowing God to have fellowship the right way in us. Now, let us look at a model of fellowship in early church. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47 gives us a model and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, 
and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possession and their goods and parted them to all men as every man had a need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. One can be able to wonder why was this thing so harmonious? Why was this meeting so steadfast? Why were they not broken in between? Why fear come upon every soul? Why were wonders and signs written in the midst done by the apostles? You can wonder, how comes nobody lacked? There was no lack in their midst. How comes they easily were able to sell off their possession and their wealth and their goods and, 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 and what they had and, and be able to turn it into finances and lay it at the apostles' feet for the sake of others who are needy? How comes? How comes? And then, what made them to come continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness. I believe these people were people from all walks of life. I believe they were they had different standings in life because for you to have a possession, hmm, then you need to have a, a high standing in life. For you to have uh, wealth and goods and sell them, you need to have a, a standing with the a high standing in life. There, were, there was no that segregation of this person is poor, this person is schooled, this person is, has degrees, that person is driving a big car, you know, it can't be my, you know, eh, tunapatania wapi, so that during fellowship you spend a lot of time with those who are like you. Maybe they have wealth like you. They drive big cars like you. They live in big homes like you. And you spend very little time with those who have nothing. And maybe just pray for them. And yet you are wallowing in a lot of wealth. You are eating sumptuously. And you cannot carry any to give to the people who don't have. And maybe you just put them on some certain organ of charity. Go to the charity. We have a charity in church can give you. But what you have, you are not ready to share with anybody. These people were in one accord. Another thing, there was no sin inside them. Because we have seen the instances when the Holy Spirit could expose sin in their midst. And the sin was really punishable. And that caused them to move in one accord. To move them, to, 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 move, uh, to have love for one another. And feigned love. And, and, and cause them to be together and cause them to desire one another. There were no schisms inside them. There was nothing like that. They were in one accord, steadfastly, at, at apostles' doctrine. May the Lord help us to see eye to eye on the message of fellowship. And so that we may be able to get revival on that area. We are saying we need revival. How will revival come when we have not even been restored to one another? We have not even been restored to God. We go to God hypocritically. Like the two men who went to pray in the temple. One is holier than thou. How can we go to God in such a, such a nature? We are saying God is holy. We can't fellowship with him when we are walking in darkness. Brethren, this word is for us to evaluate who we are and what is our stand in fellowship as concerns the body of Christ. Praise be the name of the Lord. These believers were controlled by the fellowship of other believers. That was what was controlling them. And we see that maybe they took this from the beginning because Adam and Eve, during the dispensation of innocence, they were in one accord. They were full of oneness. They loved one another. And the creation was beautiful. And there was a lot of bliss. Before sin entered, then blame game entered. Where we are living in blame game, 
when we are living in apostasy. Because we are not living in innocence. Fellowship requires innocence. And this is what the early church did. They innocently longed for one another, innocently met together, innocently prayed for one another, innocently shared together until the Holy Spirit would expose sin in their midst. As a result, signs and wonders, the Holy Spirit was able to minister. Many people were added to church. Love be touched. It was everywhere. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Undeterred, unbroken, unbroken, wholeheartedly, steadfastly, knitted together. We are called into this fellowship with other believers. If you are saved by Jesus Christ, we believers are called into this holy fellowship. Kind of fellowship can only bring us to commune fellowship, according to First John chapter one verse three. Thus, the believers are called to participate with other believers in God in His mission day. If we have to achieve this, then we need to be a committed church. That's number one. Two, the doctrine of the apostles. That's the word of God. Committed to fellowship. Being committed to the word is another thing. Being committed to fellowship is another thing. Committed to breaking of bread. See what they did. They broke bread house to house. It was not waited on when, by who, and how in the church. They broke this bread house to house. That is fellowship. And this bread is the Holy Communion. They continue steadfastly in prayer. There were so many houses of prayer. Homes where prayers were being made. We have an example of the house of John Mark. Mama John Mark. Where prayers were being made. That even when the apostles were arrested and they were able to come out of jail like uh, uh, Peter did. He knew where to find intercessors. They were there. They were there. Intercessors were there and deterred. They were committed to giving. They sold. And this is only revival. The Holy Spirit can provoke one to give. They were committed to sharing. We remember even Ananias' case in Acts chapter 5 when, uh, when the apostle Peter challenged him. Why are you deceiving the Holy Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit that brings all this. When we allow the Holy Spirit through the right heart, the right way of coming together to a holy fellowship, then the Holy Spirit is able to bring revival in our midst. And this is how our fellowships need to be. All of us, we have goals to achieve in this area. Through love and care. There was a lot of love and there was a lot of caring for one another. Through ministry service, there was a lot of ministry services, service being born inside them. A lot of hospitality. Through small groups, community small groups that could share the word of God, that could break bread, that could host prayers. They were together through love and care. Believers not only need each other, but they needed also to be together. There is no other way we can earn, encourage, and love and care if we don't come together as small groups in fellowship. Brethren, if we need to create room for this church, we could have already gone back fishing. This kind of fellowship is not what we need. What we have is a counterfeit fellowship. The true fellowship is what is in the book of Acts as demonstrated by the early church. Being together motivated this love. Fellowship happens through love and care. A general care for others of providing indiscriminately as long as they were ready. 
anybody that needed. It was anybody who is in need. It was not the less fortunate as people were in need. Their needs were taken care of so that the mission day of God could continue. They stole their possession and laid proceeds at the feet of their the deacons for easy distribution to the needy. Now, verse 7 says something. Having favor with all people. In fact, they had possession. Much, much possession. They did not sell it all. Just part of it. They had possession. The blessings of God tickled so much. They were blessed. We can only begin to know people when we begin walking together, sharing together, and also begin active ministry that brings bold. Acts 3, verse 11 to 12, and Acts chapter 5, verse 21 are a result of this fellowship. The power of God was too great. Miracles were registered. Men could walk, could, the shadows of the apostles could, could bring healing. Like the, the case at the, the gate of the temple, where a man had just to rise up and start leaping when the poor uh, Peter said, What I have, he said, What I give you, the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. This was as a result of the immense fellowship, the oneness, the one accord, the love, the sharing, and the care. Daily in the temple and in every house, there is his not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The preaching and the teaching went on into groups both from the temple and homes, centered with the same mind, glorifying and worshiping God, doing outreach activities and home care. They developed strong tradition through their fellowship, born in the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and continue in, in fulfilling the same. They devoted themselves to particular practices. Apostles' teachings, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayer, the word of God. These values on the word of God is found throughout the acts of the apostles. They placed value in the word of God. Fellowship being high on their agenda, we need to question why. Why was that fellowship high in the agenda? It was their number one agenda. Equally devoted to apostles' teaching. Question, what should we do to this, to be devoted to apostles' teachings? There is no day teachings lacked in the temple. It was not for only certain days. Every day there was teachings going on. And those who wanted to be devoted to those teachings, they were always available to go and listen to the teachings. The church not being only in the temple, but a tight-knit community of dedicated followers of Christ, an interweaved community church. The strength of their fellowship demonstrated in verse 44 and 45 of the Acts chapter 2. No one was in need because they cared for each other. The question is, how many needs of the members of the church do we pray for and release them to God to not, and are not arranged within the church? How many times do we pray for them and tell them, let go, God will meet your needs. In fact, we use that word so much. May God meet all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Yet as a church, we do nothing. How many times? Apostle Paul, in developing this theme of his teaching about the body and the spiritual gifts, he expounded the key component of fellowship as love to one another in his First Corinthians chapter 13. Breaking of bread was also one core value practices of the early church. From house to house, they did it. What was its significance and its impact? And how can the church today implement this breaking of bread house to house? This share of the, this show or brought out the impact of the church without borders. House to house church practices reveals that it was a practical it was it, it, it was practically in small groups in homes rather than in a church and 
the climax of it, many souls were added unto the Lord. The power of God was evident and everybody was being refilled again and again and again. May the Lord help us as he's speaking to us through the fellowship that was in the early church as we see in Acts chapter 5. And they had, they had unspeakable joy. There was a lot of joy. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We bless you. Even as we relate with your fellowship, according to First John chapter 5, that your fellowship is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost from First John chapter 3 through to chapter 10. Help us, O oh God, to be that church in the early church. Restore us. Restore your love, your fellowship for one another, for you, O oh Father, in us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.